In this video, we're going to take a look at culling masks and how they pertain to cameras. Now, in short, what is a culling mask? Well, a culling mask is basically a layer that we've uh, created before, or it works with layers that we've created before. Mm -hmm. A culling mask is basically a bit or a sequence of bits that determine which layers are either going to be shown or not shown. Right. It really just uses the layers to control whether we can see a certain layer set of objects or not. Now, if we come into the culling mask for our main camera, which is what I have selected, we're doing all of this right now with the main camera on our first person controller, I can take this and set it uh, to ignore, say, the campsite. So currently the campsite is checked because we have everything on. So if I uncheck this and just play, now if we take a look, we don't see our campsite. Now we still see remnants of the campsite's existence, and that is because we have some light mapping taking place. Mm -hmm. So all of the shadows were actually baked into the ground, but the objects themselves are not visible. Now this by itself is not particularly useful. However, if you were establishing a multi-camera setup, you can set up where some cameras can see objects that are close range, while other cameras can no longer see those objects, and that's something we'll actually explore when we go into our multi-camera setup here in just a little bit. Right. You could also use it as a trick if, let's say, you've got multiple cameras again, and you decide you want to have a HUD, and you can put a HUD on a layer. And in the case of, let's say, we're doing more advanced scripting, and we only had a single camera like we have now for a first person, you could technically take your HUD, put it on a layer, and then you could script it so you could hit a key combination that would toggle your HUD on and off, mm -hmm. or you could use it to turn off your HUD during cutscenes. Right. Actually, I was just thinking there's another way you could use it as well if you wanted to be really, really clever. You take, uh, like, your character and put it on its very own layer, mm -hmm. and later on we're going to take a look at how you can do a render target texture. Mm -hmm. You can set up a render target that looked a lot like a mirror, and then have your character be like a vampire, where in the mirror that uh, particular camera that is being used to simulate your mirror has its culling mask set to the character, and suddenly your character's not leaving a reflection. That would be kind of uh, cool. And that's totally random, and if you have no idea what I'm describing there, that's okay, because we're going to be exploring how to set up a target texture in an upcoming video. The important thing I wanted to get across here was this culling mask setup, and really uh, the only thing to it is that it's going to allow you access to all of your layers to control what it is this camera can and cannot see. That's really all there is to it. Right. Uh, basically, layers are acting like little flags. They're either on or they're off. Different things use these culling masks. Lights use them. Cameras use them. You're allowed to use them in scripting for determining whether or not rays can interact with them. They have a lot of power, but they are limited in number. You only have 32 of them, 24 being which that you can define yourself. Eight are reserved for Unity use. That's right. And that will wrap things up for this video. Thank you for watching.